Let's spew my private personal affairs to the public. This isn't really cosplay focused, but it kind of is because the person it involves uh, <laughs> is a cosplayer. And the whole situation honestly made me promise that I would never ever date someone in the cosplay community again. If you can't tell by the uh, title of this video, which I have yet to decide at this point because I'm just winging it, I'm going to tell you about the time that I dated a narcissist. So the first time we met Matt was at a meetup. Um, before I was leaving town for the summer. Here's the thing about me. I flirt a lot with everyone. I hit on everyone. I'm not like seriously, but just like I enjoy like flirting. It's a good time. Anyway, it was a whole thing. Um, so we ended up talking, um, phone conversations, text conversations, and then I went home for the summer. Um, and that kind of continued into the summer. They asked me, they're like, so what? are we? Me at the time, I'm like, what do you mean, what are we? Like, I thought we were friends. She was like, but you flirt with me. And I'm like, well, I mean, I flirt with everyone, but okay. Then like a month and a half later, she asked again, like, what are we? And at that point, I'm like, do you want to be something? She asked if I want to be her girlfriend. And this is, this is the first warning sign. And I was like, well, I mean, I guess why not? We just kind of continue on as normal, like, because we'd already been talking and flirting. And then when I was coming back into town um, for the school year, because uh, I was in college at the time, she was like, yeah, I'll pick you up from the airport. And I was like, okay, cool. My plane was half an hour late. And even though my plane was half an hour late, she still did not get to the airport for 45 minutes after that. Even just on that first night, um, things got physical. For me, that is so out of character. I'm not someone who is a very f physical person. Uh, I was someone who was a very physical person. I, I have some personal stuff that I deal with. And even like kissing, like that was the first time I ever made out with someone ever. Um, and I ended up having a panic attack. And I, I do not say that lightly, like I ended up full-blown hyperventilating, like awful, it was really bad. In that instance, she seemed very comforting and she was like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then after I calmed down, she went straight back to make out mode. She's not the only person who does that. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is about me, like having a breakdown, but everybody thinks that's the time to kiss me. There, there was a, another time where, and this is something that God, my sister was coming into town the next day. It was two in the morning. I was exhausted. We're like making out, but I'm like half awake. And she's like, so are we, are we going to go any farther than that? I'm like, no, I'm tired. My sister's going to be in town in like five hours. Got to pick her up from the airport. No, it's like a, a switch flipped. And she was like, get out of bed. At the time, I was like, I, I thought it was a joke, like 20 seconds of awkward silence. And then she's like, fine, I'll get out of bed. It was my bed, by the way. And then like 20 minutes later, she gets back in bed and she's like, I'm still mad at you. Like the floor is just cold. So I'm confused and just like hurt. As soon as she falls asleep, I go into the bathroom and just start crying for like three hours. I am not a sexual person. Anything I would do with a partner is specifically as a compromise for that partner. And I realized I forgot to mention a very specific point that always gets on my nerves. I actually like brought up the fact that, hey, you know, I, I'm asexual and there, there are things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not always wanting to, and by that I mean, <laughs> I'm like never wanting to. Sexy things. This is something that I have always been very clear on. She would try to guilt me and say, oh, I only, like, I only push for it because it seems like you, like, are, are wanting it. And I'm like, are you, <sighs> Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Uh, my sister comes into town. Me and my sister are having a great time because I don't see her often is annoyed at us for paying attention to each other instead of her. Not even 48 hours into knowing my sister, she's like, you're the sister that I never had that I've always wanted. Hey, 
and has a younger sister. B, my sister looked at me and I looked at her and we're like, what the fuck? She met one of my old roommates. Not even half an hour into meeting my roommate, she starts telling her about how she got locked in the boiler room in the basement by her parents. I think both me and my former roommate at that time were kind of shocked. This is a stranger to you. Looking back, I can tell it was a, a tactic to make her the most important person in the conversation. At the time, I was like, who, who says that to someone that they just met? She would do things like buy me these little gifts that I didn't necessarily need or want. Uh, most of them would immediately go back to her, if that makes sense. So like she bought me a scarf and I don't think I ever actually got the scarf because she immediately started using it herself. And then like, that was that. Because at that same time, she had also just gotten an apartment with her best friend and was so, so irresponsible with her money. We would go to the bank and she would be like, the bank lost $300 and they're not giving it back to me. Or they changed my pin and they didn't tell me. Things that are clearly illegal and she's clearly lying. At the same time, she's getting me these little dumb presents. And I'm like, why, why would you get me this when you were clearly having financial problems? She's one of those people who would also do that like really passive thing where like we'd go to the store and I would be getting something and she would see something and she'd be like oh man this is a really nice thing i wish i could get it like oh I, it's too bad clearly not asking for the item but wanting other people to offer to get it for her and it wasn't just with me it was with her friends as well so true story um when we were together she went through it was either two or three different jobs and we weren't together that long one of them she worked at uh, she worked there for probably like a couple weeks and I don't know and then she got fired and when she explained it she was like I don't know why they fired me I don't know why they didn't tell me like this is their fault you know as she does later I have a I had a friend a different friend who got a job at that same at one point uh, come back in and um, the other manager went up to um, my other friend who was working there and was like, keep an eye out for her. She shoplifts. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired and that's karma right there. <laughs> she would do this thing where she, nothing was ever her fault, ever. Like as you can tell from the like bank thing, it was never her fault. Um, but there was a particular instance where um, her car so disgusting it was so disgusting for fruit flies and it was trashed and it was just like it was gross it was nasty I offered I was like let's go to a like a car wash or something and we'll get this cleaned out and figure out what is like doing this thing and it just it never came to fruition fr fruition fruit it never fruited we did end up figuring out what was causing the fruit flies um, because a friend of ours sat in the back seat and they moved like it, not even underneath the floorboard, they like moved a piece of paper from the floor and there was this bag of rotted maggoty cherries. Like it was disgusting. Immediately, immediately was like, this is my mom's fault. She left these in my car like two months ago and forgot to take them out. And that's why like all these things are happening into my car and she ends up calling her mom like and is like this is your fault and I'm sitting there like should have cleaned out your fucking car yes your mom accidentally left a bag of something here but it had been it had been this disgusting for who knows how long uh, you you can see where my frustration would lie I, I deal with some mental health issues and I was going through a very very low point but anytime I would mention anything be like hey I'm having a bad week or this is something that I'm feeling right now or this is something that is stressing me I would get one sentence out and it, it would be like a constant not like one upping because I I'm not someone who's going to try to fight that that is so much energy and it, it hurts to just be ignored like that she just talk and talk and talk at me and I obviously was having my 
emotional needs unfulfilled. I was really, was really, really depressed. Not that I think that your partner should be your end all or be all end all support, but I wasn't getting anything and I was having so much taken from me. We drove out to her apartment, hour long drive, and I purposely did not say anything, which I know is like a, like, oh my God, girls don't talk. But like, I did purposely did not say anything with the intent of seeing if she cared. That is to say, if she had asked me, like if she said once, like, hey, are you okay? Or, hey, why aren't you talking? Or, hey, what's up? Or asked anything of me. Literally tried to engage me. I would have been like, yeah, okay, here's what's up. And the entire time she just kept talking about herself. And that was the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to break up with this person. Again, I can't believe I put myself through that. I do, could do no wrong and never took any blame. I was constantly not berated because it wasn't like she would like call me names or insult me constantly but at the time we were dating I worked graveyard shifts I was up nights on top of taking like a full load of classes uh, so I, I slept for a lot of like the morning um, because I specifically had afternoon classes and so I would sleep until like one two sometimes three in the afternoon I ended up getting a urinary tract infection. So I was on antibiotics for that, which ended up giving me a yeast infection. And then I just had like the worst chest cold of my life. Also taking classes, also working graveyards. And it's like a Saturday and I'm sleeping. And we had this group chat with our friends, like 10 of our friends all in this group chat. And I go into it after I'm up and she's complaining about me, like not paying attention to her and being lazy. And so she called me selfish because I was using my like portable battery to charge my phone and I didn't give it to her because I was using it and also there was a wall outlet like right next to us. Six months into being together and that is six months including the not actually together together but like separate towns talking over the phone. She's like I know exactly how I'm going to propose to you and I have our friend who's like going to help me and I'm like, you're thinking about marriage? Listen, if you propose to me any time in the next six months, any time in the next year, probably any time in the next couple years, I will say no, because that's not me. That's not who I am, but she would keep bringing it up. I put off actually like breaking up with her for probably a month. She was coming into town for another like cosplay meetup and she was planning on staying at my dorm with another friend and I was so stressed about it and so just like I didn't want to be around her because I knew exactly what would happen I knew exactly how I would feel the catalyst was I was talking to a friend about it in the lobby of my building and I started crying like and I don't like crying where people can see me. I started fucking sobbing in the middle of the lobby because I was just so stressed about the, the very idea of just seeing her and being in the same vicinity of her and just having my soul sucked out by her. My friend was like, you have to break up with her. Like, you cannot put yourself through this. And so I did. I called her. It was two in the morning. Um, I knew she would be awake because she didn't have a job. She was like, can I ask why? And I told her straight up, I was like, you are toxic for me. And I cannot do that to myself. I have to take care of myself. It was really rough because knowing who she was, um, I knew that she was going to turn it around on me. I knew that she was going to talk trash about me to everyone. I knew she was going to blame me. I knew she was going to make it seem like I was the problem. I thought I was going to lose a bunch of friends because of something that was outside of my control. I personally didn't react as well as I, I would have liked. Um, I was like, I don't want to be with you together romantically, but I want to be friends. She was like not having it. So I was angry that she didn't want to be friends because like in my mind, I was like, after all of the shit that you put me through and I'm willing to forgive you and you don't want to be friends with me, which like right now I'm like, yeah, probably not the best reaction, but all things considered, things went exactly how I thought that they would go. We, we had mutual friends and I personally made a point of not discussing 
my feelings or the things that we had gone like she had put me through with those mutual friends because I didn't want them to feel like they had to choose between the two of us. A couple months after our breakup, after I had specifically like only complained about her to like people who lived out of town or my sister or people who who she did not interact with, um, I go to an event and um, have like five five different people come up to me dur at, during the course of this one event, like unprompted. They are like, we need you to know that c is saying really awful things about you, but we know you and we know you as a person and we know that everything that she's saying is shit and we support you. And <laughs> listen, <sighs> like even now it simultaneously like breaks my heart and then also warms it because one of the, the one of the worst things for me is people not believing me and so like that was that was kind of the turning point where I was like okay she is saying these things and she's spreading these awful like frankly rumors I honestly don't even know what she said I just <laughs> know that people told me she was saying shitty things and my actions spoke louder than her words um and so like even now I'm I'm amazed at just that <laughs> she would do the thing where she would say that we should cosplay like pair, cosplay pairs um, and I have nothing against, like, couples cosplay is, like, cool. But it wasn't like, oh, what do you think about this? It would be her telling me what we're doing. But we actually did a Korra and Asami cosplay together. Um, even though I'm not really a fan of Legend of Korra. I'm, I'm a petty bitch. <laughs> okay? I'm a petty bitch. She was like, I'm gonna cosplay Rose Quartz and you're gonna cosplay Greg. And this was early on in Steven Universe. And I fucking hated Greg. I thought he was the worst dad. I thought he was a deadbeat. I was just like, no, I don't like, I don't like Greg. I don't want to cosplay Greg. And she was like, well, you could do like a female version of Greg. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I don't want to do this character. Like, I don't want to be this character because I don't like this character. I am not ashamed to admit that after finding out about all of the shit she had been talking about me to everyone, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to cosplay Rose Quartz. And I'm going to cosplay Rose Quartz so good that she will never have any hope of ever, ever being as good of a Rose Quartz as I am. And so I did. And I got third place in the competition that year. And Rose Quartz is now one of my favorite characters. And I've done many versions of her. And it's not like I could avoid her because it's... Like I said, it's it's a small community, um, and she, she has since, God bless, moved far, far away. The fact that I did not feel welcome, even if it was just, like, because of this one person, I had to keep an eye out, and I had to worry about running into them, and it, like, it would make me physically nauseous just going to something and knowing that they would be there. I've got no way to close this video other than I just wanted to complain. So thanks for listening to me complain. Bye now.